Good morning. I'll just hang on and see if some people jump on the live. Um, I'm in a bit of a different location today. If you've been watching my stories um, this week, you might have seen some photographs of uh, some redecorating that's going on in the house. So my office space has become like the dumping ground for all the other stuff. So you can't see, but I'm surrounded by bits of furniture and boxes of things. So good morning. I'm hoping that when we come to put everything back in the redecorated room, we can have a bit of a declutter, uh, which would be nice, but it's not always as easy as it seems, is it? Um, so welcome. This is um, my weekly uh, knits and cake for breakfast video. So if you haven't watched one of these before, um, the idea is that uh, on a Thursday morning I have a bit of cake for my breakfast. Um, partly because it's nearly the weekend and partly because um, before lockdown I was hosting a weekly knit night, which I would always bake for. But now we're doing it online. And on a Thursday morning I would have a bit of the leftover cake for my breakfast. Um, and I've been trying to, to keep up with the baking um, every week. Not always successfully, but this week I was um, catching up a wee bit with the Great British Bake Off. Um, if you're in the UK you might have seen it. And um, I decided, I've never done this before, I decided that I would make the thing that they did for the um, for the challenge, or what's it called? The technical challenge. And um, I made the babka uh, cake, which really is like a bread. So it was the chocolate week this week. So they made this um, chocolate bread. It was Well, they called it an enriched dough. So I guess it's a bit like a brioche or something like that. It's got the, um, the bread has got butter and milk and eggs added to it. Yeah, that's right. So I decided, oh, that looks quite that looks good and um and I looked up the recipe and I started making it and then I realized oh no the recipe is assuming that you've got one of those um mixers with the dough hook and everything and I've never been that great with anything yeasted I can never really get it to rise properly except until recently when I started using sourdough and I found that a bit more successful so I wasn't sure that it was going to work very well but I think having watched the Bake Off contestants make it helped me to kind of feel a bit more like I knew what I was doing so it, it worked really well and I just did it by hand because I don't have one of those fancy mixers um, and you so you make the chocolate mixture and then you make the dough roll the dough out if you didn't see it um, spread the chocolate mixture and the nuts on roll it up and then you kind of cut it down long ways and you make a two-stranded plait with it and put it in the tin. So um, it wasn't as difficult as I thought it was going to be so if you're tempted to try it um, and seriously I'm not usually very good with anything yeasted I can never get it to rise properly but this worked so um, the recipe was on the Bake Off uh, website. It's good, it's quite sweet, but it's not, because it's dark chocolate, it's not like really, really sweet. It feels like, because it's bread, it's quite breakfasty, so. A good crumb, yes. Thank you, Ivy. Oh, Ivy's Nana Knits, hello. Um, yeah, I was really, um, taken aback by how well that worked out. So, you know, it's about ha half of the loaf is already gone and I only made it last night, so I don't think it'll last for much longer. Um, yes. Anyway, I hope you're doing okay this morning. Um, it's, it's all right, the weather here in Edinburgh today. It's a bit overcast, but it looks like it might, the sun might come through. It's been raining a lot this week. So, um, now I would show you what I've been working on but I haven't actually done an awful lot of knitting this week. Um, if you have um, 
been uh, following me on social media for a wee while, you'll know that I have a bit of an ongoing um, issue with my shoulders, which means that I can't always knit as much as I want to be. Um, and this week it's been particularly bad, uh, especially at the weekend there. I think I might have slept a bit funny on my shoulder. And when I woke up on Saturday morning, uh, it was really, really sore. Just even just like moving like that was sore. Um, it was a bit better on Sunday, but yeah, I haven't managed to do an awful lot of knitting. Um, so, but I have been trying to work on this hat, which I'll show you. So it's a hat to go with my um, soft hearted cowl which was a cowl that I released um, in March and it's knitted. There's three different sizes that you can make um, and this is the third size. So it's doubled, it's double sided. So you knit it like in a big loop, which means that you can make the different sizes and wear it. Uh, more that way up. This is to be worn this way up. So it's really, really snuggly because it's two layers and you knit it in the round and then you join together the two sides once you've finished. And it's got this um, slip stitch patterning with a garter stitch background. And then you get this traveling stitch pattern here, which um, kind of grows out from the middle here and works its way around and then I'll show you the other side um, then it sort of meets in the middle there so it looks quite different between the different sides and depending on which way around you wear it um, so that came out in March and I wanted to make a hat to go with it but I, when I was designing this, this was my sort of initial swatch. Um, so it's the same sort of idea, but it's only got one slipped stitch. Whereas this one has got, um, yeah, it's got three here. And the, and this pattern's bit, there's two. There's only two slip stitches going across. So I wanted to make it a bit more I, when, I, when I did this swatch, I thought this was too delicate for the cowl. So the cowl's called soft, soft hearted cowl. Um, so I kind of kept this to the side. And now I'm thinking, I have been thinking about this for a while, that I would do a hat to match, but I'm going to do it in this more delicate uh, version. So I, I've had a little go at swatching and, you know, worked out my numbers and I had a first try, which is looking like this. Um, so this is the pink, uh, the Jameson and Smith jump weight, this pink, the same as this uh, lowy shawl that I've got on, and the gray. Um, so it's a bit more subtle. And then the crown decreases, which haven't quite worked out. They need a bit more spacing. Between them, it's decreasing too quickly, which is why it's getting all puckered. So that needs to be redone. And then the brim is in the single colour, but I'm not very happy with that either, which is why it's not on any needles there. <laughs> it's just been... I just ripped it off. Um, so I've started again. This is a bit more of a like a prototype one. Um, but that's the general idea of the hat. Oh, thank you, Kirsty. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of a matching hat, um, but it's a bit more of a delicate, uh, version of the patterning. So I've cast on another one, which I think I've left in the other room, which is, uh, like a grello version. So a mustard yellow and a dark gray. And I'm hoping that I'll have it finished for the virtual Yorkshire Yarn Festival, which I'm taking part in. Um, at the oh the thirty first of October, um, and I'll have kits. So that's my um, that's my prototype.
Oh, Michelle. Yes, it does go really well with Coraline. It's the same sort of idea with the slip stitch patterning, which I seem to be a bit obsessed with at the moment, um, with the garter stitch background. Yeah, so hopefully I'll get that figured out and my shoulders will behave themselves um, and I'll get a bit more done next week. So yeah, that, I've been doing a little bit of knitting, but as I say, I can't do a huge amount because my shoulders are, are playing up. And what tends to happen is then if I try to do too much knitting, then my arm muscles get sore because they're having to do the work uh, that one of my shoulders would be doing. And so it's just a bit of a vicious circle. So it's better just to just to rest. I've got some physio exercises uh, that I need to get back onto. So uh, I will do that. But um, the other thing I wanted to tell you about is that I have set a date for running a couple of online workshops. So this is the first time I've really done a kind of teaching workshop online. I've been running um, a couple of knit nights and things, but that's just a bit more of a social thing. And so I'm running them um, next Saturday and I've got one on cabling without a cable needle, um, which has been a very popular workshop when I've taught it in person. And it's really good for if you're always losing your cable needle. I quite often, if I've got my hair up, would have shoved it in my ponytail and then forgotten where I'd put it. And um, it really makes your cabling quicker. If you can if you can get the hang of it so there's one about that and then there's another one on knitting two at a time which is a really good way to do socks or sleeves or even mittens um so having two two items on your circular needles at the same time and you also it's really good for um for making them both the same so you know like if you're doing sleeves you get the decreases in exactly the same places and you also avoid that second sock syndrome or second mitten syndrome because you get them both done at the same time which is really lovely so that one is in the afternoon so it's Saturday the 24th of October um, there's some more details in I've put a link uh, in my profile on Instagram but if you go on to Eventbrite and just search Maddie Harvey you should be able to find them uh, that's where I'm selling the tickets and because it's the first time I've been doing them online um, I've made them at a, a special price um, because I will practice with all the tech beforehand but I think the first time you're doing these things is always always a bit more of a chance of something going amiss so I've made them at a special price which um, going forward that they won't there'll be more than that um once you know i get the hang of things so if you wanted to join one of those um you can find the link in my profile if you've just joined hello good morning um i'm just about to finish up but i will put the replay um in my grid later and i will also i'll be adding some subtitles and i use an auto subtitler which quite often makes a few gaffes uh, and thinks that I've said something really rude when I promise I haven't. Um, and I put screenshots of that in my stories, which is quite funny. So if you fancy having a look at that later, um, watch out for that on my stories. But I will let you get on with your Thursday and I will see you next week, 10 o'clock. Uh, I'll bake something else for next week. Um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Bye.